Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, gonna be reviewing the Pocket Network, which has 45,000 followers on Twitter, and they are building the RPC base layer to power Web3 with unstoppable open data. And uh, we're gonna talk about what RPCs are and all that, but before I wanna get into this review, I just wanna give you a reminder, these videos, I don't spend days or weeks doing research, reading every piece of news and all that on here. So these videos, Take them, if they help you, awesome, but always be sure to do your own research before you invest in anything. Don't watch one of my videos just and then base your whole buying decision based on that, so just wanted to say that. Looking at the chart, it's 23 cents. It's got a $381 million market cap, fully diluted 391 million. So basically, all of the coins tokens are in circulation. So no need to worry about any dumps or token unlock, unlocks or anything like that. It does not have a max supply though. It has been around for a long time. If you go max on the chart, it's been on the chart since early 2022, but I know that their main net actually launched in July, 2020, but I couldn't find any prices going back further than this. I tried deck screener, I tried trading view. Maybe it's out there, but I couldn't find it. So you can see as of late, if we just look at the three month, as of late, it's been doing pretty good. It was around 10 cents and now it's at 23 cents. So about a two and a half X. So like they say on their Twitter, they are building the RPC base layer. And RPC stands for, it stands for remote procedure call. And the way I understand this, you could be running some sort of program and then in order to get some data, you go call a server somewhere else and you're taking functions and data from these other data sets and making and incorporating them into the function that you created. If you're just a regular person in crypto, you might see this RPC most likely if you've set up any sort of network in a crypto wallet. Sometimes you have to go add a custom network to whatever wallet you're working with and it will say their RPC network, or it wants like an RPC link. And I believe that's what they are building, is a gateway so that they can be the RPC link for 50 plus blockchains to tap into all this other data that all these other nodes have. And they say that here, that is their mission, empower developers with access to the most reliable, performant, and cost-effective data. From their website, some of the features, and this, the tech, they are not a company. They are a DAO at this stage. They are also open source code, which I think is great, especially for data. I think when it comes to Infura, who they're actually working with, we're gonna talk, I had some questions in the Discord I thought were really awesome. We got really awesome responses from, but Infura, for example, they are the RPC that you tap into with MetaMask, but they track your IPs. There was actually an incident also where they, they accidentally geo-blocked all of Venezuela a couple years ago. So depending on how you think of crypto, wallets having the power to do that through data providers like Infura, maybe not the best thing. Regarding the demand for this product, Product Network is an RPC base layer, the developers, applications, we already talked about that. Each gateway, which there's, think about it maybe like a mesh is how I'm getting this. You would plug into the gateway and then that mesh would have access to like 50 different blockchains and all this extra data, but you only have to plug in to the one spot in order to access all of that. Each gateway is effectively its own RPC business, but instead of building their own underlying infrastructure, they plug into Pocket Network's Web3 infrastructure. Kind of like if anyone could build a ride hailing app on top of Uber's database and systems. By decentralizing them, we increase innovation, unlock censorship resistance, important, and accelerate relay volume growth. And the gateways can scale their infrastructure via Pocket Network's decentralized network of nodes in 22 countries with 66% on bare metal. And bare metal just means they're not using, you know, AWS or Microsoft cloud services. They're actually running their own bare metal, uh, is what they call it, like hosted nodes. Regarding the actual token itself, Pocket is the utility token that powers the network, and we're gonna get more into the tokenomics here in a second. It is important for Pocket to be liquid, they say here, so that node operators can sell some of their tokens to cover their costs, and so users, investors can always buy some tokens to use and capitalize the network. 
That was a setup to share that that's why they introduced wrapped pocket on Ethereum and it, why that was such a key milestone to get you know more liquidity so that people could swap it around. Pocket Network, it first launched in Mainnet in July 2020, as we sort of mentioned earlier. A major upgrade though, Shannon, is targeted to deploy to Mainnet summer of 2024. And according to this in the roadmap, it does look like that would happen in June. So the very end of Q2. So right now you've got nodes that underlie this whole thing. And then in terms of the gateways, you've only got a couple of those. If you go back to their Twitter, you could see Nodes Infra and Build with Grove. So it looks like there's only two gateways at the moment. From their Discord, I asked about this because like we said, Infura being able to track IPs and geoblock, and geoblock, not necessarily a good thing. So with the current set of gateways, they are operated in the US and permission to the network. So they have to follow US rules. However, the next update, Shannon, is all about permissionless gateways so that they can't be stopped by any government or entity. So when that happens, that will be a big step towards making crypto more resilient to you know the fight. And they also said that they do not track IP addresses at all. So even if they wanted to geoblock, they couldn't do it. Into the economics here of the project. So node runners must currently stake at least 15,000 pocket to run a pocket node. But remember, 23 cents is what it costs right now. So what is that? Roughly like $3,500 or so. But they do have a capped number of validators at 1,000. So the current validator threshold, because you have to compete. So the more you stake, the more likely you would be in this validator set. It's 75,000 pocket. So what's 25% of that? I don't know, somewhere around probably $18,000 or so. The original distribution broke down like this. Founders got 23%, contractors, they did have some private sales, the Dow got some, and, and this was about 650 million. Right now, the current supply is 1.68 billion. So that means in the last four years or so, there has been four, there has been one hundred. Uh, there has been one billion in new supply, which is a lot. So they do have inflation, which we're going to show a graph of here. But eighty-five percent of the node runners doing the work to serve each relay request sent to the network. Eighty-five percent of the rewards daily go to them. Five percent go to validators just securing the network, and ten percent goes to the DAO treasury. And this is what this emission schedule looks like. And they do have some deflation here in basically 2028, but that depends on these assumptions. The projections are based on a USD pocket price of 15 cents, which it's much higher than that right now, and 60 billion relays by, by day in 2028. And I think they're talking about RPC calls, 60 billion per day by 2028. So you could see this initial spike in, in, uh, in emissions was massive in the beginning. And they did even pocket news, they addressed this in November 12th, 2023. Hey, Prodigal Sons, welcome back home, grab a seat. First off, inflation slashed. Took it from those wild 90% peaks down to more sustainable 5%. So that is much better, and that's exactly what we see in, the, in this graph, right? Right now, we are about at this point. So it looks like emissions are gonna be uh, much less, much less than they were before. So there may not be that much sell pressure except for the continual sell pressure for the nodes that are doing these relays to fund their costs. They do have a burn in there, although there's not really that much burn happening. 638,000 pocket per year is the projected burn. But remember the, the emissions was like 220,000 per day. So it's really only about three days of burn projected right now. The emissions are growing about 4.74% per year, and yeah, 80.58 million per year. Since launch, the protocol has served almost 700 billion relays across 50 plus chains. But if we look at this dashboard here, it looks like it's mostly EVMs, although you've got Solana Custom here at 3.7%. So mostly Polygon, ETH, Binance Smart Chain, Solana Custom, and Base, and 38.7% making up the others. And I'd just be curious to see if Bitcoin was one of those. I wonder if that's even a thing. If you want to stake to earn any wrapped pocket, then you have to contribute to Uniswap and actually participate in the pools. There's no staking for just 
the pocket token itself, it doesn't look like, which I suppose is good because that makes the pocket more productive in the system. They do have a wallet over here. And if you wanted to create that, you would do that by creating a, it looks like a key store file on your computer. I didn't see a browser extension, although because they have wrapped pocket on Ethereum, I'm sure that you could just set up, you, you could just, MetaMask would work for the wrapped version. What do you guys think of Pocket Network? Let me know down in the description. If you wanna check out my portfolio, there's a link to that down below as well. If you're still here, hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.